Hello again, I'm Larry Hamilton. Welcome to my YouTube painting channel. Thank you for watching. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do a watercolor, uh, but I'm going to try to do a non-representative abstract. So don't let the term abstract scare you away yet. Um, I'm going to show you how I got that image and how I developed it and uh, a way that might help you get through a, a blockage of some kind if you're struggling with a painting, trying to do something. I'll show you how I took a regular photograph and found an abstract painting in it, and uh, then we'll see if we can paint it. Um, but first, I want to show you a couple changes in my palette. Um, as you know, I've used the same palette pretty much uh, for my watercolors all along, but um, I did realize that uh, some of the paints here I'm not using that much, so I, I looked at Garnet Lake and I looked at Golden Lake. Neither of those I've used very much at all. Um, so I decided to take those out of the palette, <clears throat> and in doing that I freed up a couple of wells, so I was able to move my primary red magenta up here between my Cad Red and Crimson Lake. I moved my Sap Green over here by the Cupric Green in place of this color, Golden Lake, which I removed. And then I brought still the green brown out of this well and brought it down to where my sap green was. So now my palette looks like this. And uh, I will uh, go over those colors very quickly with you again right now and uh, we'll see what the new palette looks like. You don't have to have this exact palette, but this is just a way I've had of sort of freeing up some of the wells and my, my big palette for my big brush um, and uh, getting rid of a couple colors I don't use that much <clears throat> or haven't used them hardly at all. So the colors here today are the, the Mimary Blue Transparent Watercolors, Neutral Tint, Primary Blue Cyan, Ultramarine Blue, uh, Ultraviolet, Crimson Lake, Primary Red Magenta, Cadmium Red, Burnt Sienna, Raw Sienna, Yellow Ochre, Cupric Green, Sap Green, Limon Yellow, Primary Yellow, Inside row, I have burnt umber, still the grain brown, and Auvignon orange. And I have one, two, three, four, five open wells plus the center that is now open for me to use um, for my mixing and, uh, and merging of colors. So hopefully that will uh, give you an idea of what I'm doing with the palette. And uh, yeah, don't, don't feel like you have to have this particular palette or all these colors, but you do need a good assortment of reds. Uh, a couple of yellows, a couple of uh, blues at least, uh, to give yourself uh, a good set of uh, paints to work from. Um, the brushes today are the same Sterling Edwards set of brushes I use, which have these uh, bristle brushes, a small, medium, and large, very unusual for watercolor uh, paintings, uh, but they do do some give some nice effects uh, on, the, on the paper. Uh, I have a one inch uh, flat, a half inch flat, I have a number uh, 12 round, number 8 round, number 4 round. I have a script liner, number 6. And uh, those are the brushes I have. I may not use all of those. Uh, I may not use all the paints again, but nevertheless, uh, <clears throat> I have them available, and you know what they are. Today we're painting on uh, Arches paper. This is a 300-pound uh, um, cold press, and it's a <clears throat> one-half sheet, which is uh, 22 by 15. Uh, inches. So you see I have some marks on here. I don't know if you can see that that well or not, but up at the top you'll see I do have a photograph of uh, one of the scenes from my uh, Peggy's Cove album, which is uh, in Nova Scotia, Nova Scotia. And uh, it's a full-blown scene, which is something that I might paint sometime, but I was looking for something abstract. Um, one way to do that is to take a painting that has a lot of content in it like this, or a photo, and uh, and, and use something that you can uh, get called a zoom finder. Um, I don't sell these, but you can find them. They're, they're really good for putting them over an, an image and trying to find other images inside them. And this is one way to, uh, to find an abstract. Uh, when you have a, a painting or a video, um, a, a photograph like this, it has a lot of, a lot of content. A lot of these uh, dock scenes have a lot of debris and lines and buckets and I don't know, crab nets and lobster tank, uh, nets and all of that sort of thing. So in here I was able to do that. I didn't really use a zoom finder on this one because this image was pretty small. Um, I brought this image into my computer uh, in using uh, like Photoshop or a, un, any type of photo editor where you can actually zoom in and crop. I was able to 
take this area here that had a lot of a lot of stuff going on right in here and I zoomed in on that and when I got in there I, I found an interesting uh, image and so what was I looking for how do you know that's an abst a good abstract painting or how that how, how do you know that may make a good abstract painting well I look for whites I look for where the whites are is there whites that sort of move through this image I'm not looking for things I'm not looking for objects I'm not looking for buckets or barrels or or uh, structures I'm just looking for shapes so I have a number of interesting white shapes here I have interesting dark shapes I have some nice diagonals here that I can use nice verticals so I have a series of vertical dark shapes vertical white shapes diagonal dark shapes and uh, diagonal white straight uh, shapes in here so that can make a good abstract painting right there but I have zoomed way in and so this is this is what I'll be using I may not use these colors um, but I'm going to try to preserve these abstract shapes that you see here and I want to have my blacks connecting together to go throughout the painting I want to have my whites connected together to go throughout the painting I want to have four different corners that look different uh, so all four corners look different so those are some of the keys to an abstract painting that that you might consider when you're trying to create an abstract as opposed to just creating something out of your head which is one way to do it uh, but um, I tend to be a little more structured my left brain's a little tougher on me than yours might be so you may be able to come up with an abstract a little easier than I do um, I have to sort of have some degree of structure some something that tells me where the whites are where the where the darks are and so I'm going to use that as my sample image and I will try to use that as a guide for um, doing this painting all right so that's how I got there um, you can get the really cheap uh, photo editing programs that are some are free on the internet um, but all you have to do is just download them and, and you can edit videos or let it edit the photos like this and zoom in and look for shapes and the other thing you can do with this is it doesn't have to be the way I've <clears throat> laid it out here <clears throat> one nice thing about uh, abstracts is it might look better to you this way or it might look better to you this way uh, one good technique is to always wait to sign it until you evaluate it in at least all four orientations before you decide I like that particular uh, image or that particular abstract so anyway that's enough on abstract uh, there are abstracts that are representative which actually um, make you see things in them that are real uh, and then there are non-representative so this is what I would call non-representative because even though these things are real they're real objects in this uh, photograph um, I'm not going to paint them as what they are I'm going to use, use them as shapes so with that said and with my uh, brushes ready to go and my paints ready to go here I'm going to uh, make sure we're zoomed in one more time here I'll get closer to the surface here so you can watch it without looking at me so much all right so I'm going to start by wetting this thing down uh, totally again I told you it's 300 pound arches uh, paper and uh, so I'm just going to wet the whole surface here um, got it taped down nicely so that uh, it doesn't stretch all over the place it will stretch when I put water in here it starts to uh, expand the fibers and uh, it makes a bubble usually bubbles up but with this 300 pound paper um, it doesn't bubble as much as the 140 pound paper that I would uh, use 300 pound paper is more expensive um, but if you like a little bit of control um, I like a little more control than I should like for trying to be an artist I guess but I have a long history of of uh, sort of controlling things my left brain is stronger one of the reasons I took up art is to try to exercise my right brain to get away from the uh, very structured very mathematical left brain that I spent my college years <clears throat> developing and working and having a career in 
Um, but this is a, a way to free yourself from that if you can. And it may take some work. It takes some work for me. Okay, so that thing is wet. I have pencil marks or dark on there. Um, I'm going to leave those in. Uh, they uh, hopefully they won't be too distractive, but uh, um, sometimes they're they're good uh, to show me where to to leave room for the white. So I want to start painting this. I'm going <clears> to <throat> leave room where these where all these uh, areas are. These are white, so I want to try to paint around those. And uh, <clears throat> I'm going to pick up some Auvignon orange to start with. I didn't know what color I'm going to use for this painting, but I'm going to put some Auvignon orange in it. And uh, I'm going to start over here where this area is, bring it down. Um, I'm going to add some darks to it to darken it down here toward the bottom a little bit. Maybe a little bit over here, like this. Okay. Um, abstracts are difficult because typically you don't have anything to go from. Um, I mean, I have forced myself to have some structure here, but. Um, the reason they're called non-representative abstract is because you're not painting buckets and barrels and things that um, you recognize. So hopefully if I do enough good abstract shapes, you won't be able to see any much that you recognize here. Okay, um, maybe let's see, maybe just a little bit in here. Okay. So there I have three abstract shapes. A little bit of color change, not much. Probably one a little darker in some of these areas. So I'm going to pull a little more dark in here. Primarily this is going to be mid-tones uh, for the most part. Um, and uh, we'll get into the uh, really dark darks a little bit later. Um, but let's start with that. and. See if I can uh, give me some palette area here. Um, I'm going to pull up my cyan blue. It's sort of a complementary color to this orange, and uh, maybe add a little bit of my violet with it. <laughs> a lot of violet right there. And we'll start putting in some other darks over here, maybe on this corner. Um, And in here, we might have some. Okay. Um, maybe a very light section up here. Uh, get some more water. Um, okay. Now I have a lot of running going on here, a lot of uh, blending and blurring of these because the uh, because the uh, paper is very wet, which was done on purpose. Um, but uh, I want you to see that. So I'm just using a lot of rectangular strokes here, a uh, few little curves here and there, but um, let's see if I can put them a little darker in here, maybe right there. Okay. This is really blurring and blending. Okay. So those are two nice complementary colors that uh, are working. Let's see here. I'm going to get a little um, neutral tint and see if I can pick up a little bit of it. And uh, put some in here, maybe. And uh, mix it over here. Okay. So 
something like that. See, since I'm, I'm really just using the photograph as sort of a guide to help me uh, find some shapes here. And uh, not trying to paint exactly what I see in the photograph, um, but trying to create interesting shapes. I don't want a lot of pure geometric shapes. Um, if you've heard me talk before about too many pure geometric shapes uh, is not something I like to create. Some artists uh, may love to put triangles and circles and squares in their paintings. Um, it's not something I like. It's not something I've been taught is uh, all that pleasing. Um, uh, you tend to want to, the eye likes abstractness generally. Okay, this was going to be and these edges are getting very soft because the paint, because the uh, the water is uh, in the paper, and so I can just sort of blur and blend things together here and give myself some other shadows and that sort of thing. Uh, one way to get soft edges is to take one of these bristle brushes, clear water, blot most of the water out, and then come in here and sort of fuzz the edge up with it like that. Um, you get some very nice soft uh, edges when you do that. Uh, you have to be careful you don't overpaint the area by having that paint in your brush like I just did in that area. But um, okay, so there's interesting few colors. Uh, really, only used three three colors, actually four, counting my um, violet. Um, let's see what happens if we. A little bit of a something there. I like this. Uh, there is some ochre in here. I want to see if I can pull out some ochre. Warm it up. Uh, you know, this is you're working with temperatures, warm and cool. I have cool here, warm there. Uh, do I need some more warm? Yeah, it wouldn't hurt to put some more warm in here like this. Uh, maybe a little bit over here. Through here like this. Okay, so I'm picking up some interesting colors. <clears throat> Paper is still very wet. Um, <clears throat> but it's something's coming to shape here. Something's coming to life. I don't know what it is. I don't really care what it is. Um, I'm just trying to make interesting shapes that people will look at. I want to see the white, preserve this white through here. I'm going to have the darkers will get darker, um, but right now I'm kind of satisfied with the way this is looking. Um, have a little more. This is getting dry down here. I can feel the, the brush giving me some nice dry brush effect here uh, on the bottom. <clears throat> so that tells you it's getting uh, to the point where I may want to dry this and uh, move on, but before I do that, uh, I'm going to take my other brush, take my one inch flat here, and uh, come back and see if I can punch up some of these darks a little bit. Get a little more of uh, this dark color in here. Um, it's really pretty dark right here. I don't want it to turn to mud, uh, but let's see if I can put another wash down here. See how that dry? You tell how that was dry? Because the paper is drying right there. So I get a nice texture. Uh, because I didn't put a lot of water in my brush, um, I have that rough texture going on there. Okay, let's put a little thing over here like this and maybe leave a something there that looks like it uh, belongs there. Actually, in an abstract, anything can belong. Um, Take these and put in some more darks over here. And we can soften some of those edges so that it's not quite so pointed. Um, all right, where else do I need some dark? Um, 
It's dark brown. Still the grain browns are very beautiful. Uh, transparent color. I think I want some right in here. Why? I don't know, but I feel like I need some in here. Okay, small, small shapes. Again, it's an irregular shape. It's not a square. It's not a rectangle. It's an abstract shape. It doesn't have to be anything. It doesn't have to represent anything because why? This is non-representative non abstract. I really don't want it to represent anything. And let's put a few darks over here. Now that's a rectangle, but I'm going to modify it with some changes. The paper's still kind of wet down here. It's, it's blossoming. Up here it's dry because the water has run down. I'm painting vertically, as uh, most of you know I do. Uh, and uh, so the, the, uh, the water is settling in the bottom of this paper down here. Uh, and uh, that's okay. I just have to remember it's there and uh, and not uh, not overpaint it or not uh, get too much runniness going on. Just to be darker there. I'm going to leave a little gap here and. Uh, We'll put something in there that <clears throat> has some, see, the center of interest is going to be over here where these whites are. So I'm just sort of filling in these spaces over here now with uh, other colors that sort of give me some more abstractness um, and some dark, dark shapes. Um, So I'm painting over and leaving some little hints of things there in the negative painting. Uh, and hopefully that will make the viewer's eye stay in the painting. Uh, I don't want the viewer to float off into the next, uh, the next area. I want to sort of make this uh, something interesting there. Um, Okay, over here in this corner, maybe I can pick up a few more of these darks. Let's come in here and see if I can pop in a something here like this. Take my brush and sort of feather the top edge. Something like this. I'm trying not to be a slave to the photograph. I, uh, I want to make sure I have uh, some interesting things going on, whether they're in the photograph or not. Uh, this actually was a some sort of a sign or something that was there in the in reality, but um, I'm not going to paint a sign over there. Okay, so <clears throat> have two different corners. They're slightly different, a little bit different, same color, but they are different. Uh, I want all four corners to be different. Um, I want to have some nice shapes in the middle. I want to have some uh, <clears throat> connection of the whites and connection of the darks. In here, I'm going to put in a, another layer of this. I'm just playing around here, folks. I'm not, uh, don't have any particular thing I'm trying to paint. Um, I'm just trying to make some interesting shapes, leave some interesting whites. And if you do this painting, I'm sure it will be vastly different because. Um, you will be responding to different things in your painting than I am. Leave this little block of white here if I can. Okay. White with some lighter colors in it right here. It's almost a rectangle, isn't it? <laughs> a 
caught myself. So let's break it up. Over here, maybe the same. Okay, so I have some interesting shapes there. It's They're lighter, so they're going to help bring your eye to this area, which is sort of the focal point of the painting. I'm going to try to leave some white paper in here and paint around uh, these areas. Um, okay. How are we doing? Step back and look at this. It's probably time to step back. i uh, got to make sure I do that. Abstracts are have a way of getting away when you're too close to them. Uh, they, they tend to get away from you once in a while, I think. Um, okay, I see a lot of interesting lights with some darks going through them in that center area. Looking at my sample image. Um, let me see, maybe right in here we've got some a little bit of a leave this and uh, put in a couple of diagonals in here like this. Okay. All right, now I think I'm going to stop and dry this. Make sure I'm, uh, I'm going to flip my microphone off and uh, so I don't blow your ears out. Okay, I think we're back and uh, should be back live now. Let me see if this is fairly dry. Um, I think it is. It's still a bit damp in here. Uh, the top certainly is, is dry. I use the back of my hand instead of the front because of oils on the front of your fingers. You don't want to stick that on the paper. Always test with the back of your hand if it feels like it's room temperature it's dry. If it feels like it's cool, it's still wet. This area here is still a little wet. That's where all the water was kept flooding down. So let's kind of stay out of that area for a little bit and let's go back and see if we can pick up a few more colors in this uh, area here that's uh, going to connect. Um, I think I want to Connect this guy here and put another color on top of him there. And uh, did have a sort of a curved thing here that comes in like this. Um, like that. And over here, a few more interesting things. Um, so let's put in a little cyan blue in here and um, what I have to start thinking of is how I'm connecting these um, shapes like that could be a something that sort of runs this way and connects so I have this pattern of a horizontal beam of some kind or at least a horizontal shape that comes over there um, and uh, get my 
brush again and see if I can soften some of those edges so they're not quite as obvious. Tone it down just a little. Something like that. Um, and over here, maybe this area in here is going to be lighter as well, but let's put a put something coming down here like a like that, and then maybe down below we'll sort of connect it here as a either a pipe or something coming down this way. So you have, sort of have the visual information that this is sort of something that might be continuing down below. Um, this, um, take my brush and so we can kind of connect these together, nice soft edges. So it's not real dark, but it's got a little bit of color in it, but the white is still there. You can see the white um, up here. Maybe I'll just pop in a little bit of light tone so that's not too obvious. Okay. Where else? All right, let's see. Um, still pretty much mid-tone for the most part, I believe. Um, I got a few darks here that are uh, staying nice and dark. But that's also still a little bit wet over there. So. Uh, See if I can come in here and put a nice little diagonal in like this. Okay, diagonals are nice for your paintings. They, uh, they definitely uh, help show movement and thrust and that sort of thing, which is really what uh, I'm trying to do here with this. Okay, so now I have that thrust that sort of brings in the, the, the diagonal movement. Um, in here, let's see. All right, let's just kind of lighten that up and just sort of feather it all together here. Okay. Um, so you play with positive and negative shapes, you play with lights and darks, you play with warm and cools. Um, you try to mix them up so that they have uh, interesting shapes and interesting values and variation in the uh, color. You don't want to have all one color here. Um, you'd like to see some gradation, gradation, gradation. So if I make this area very dark right here, your eye tends to go from the lightest light to the darkest dark, and likely will zero into this area right here, if I can make it dark enough. And I'm using my violets and my cyan blues to sort of do that with. Okay, and maybe some more over here. I'll darken a few areas here that sort of look like they might be connecting or holding up a beam or two there. See, I'm starting to think, I'm starting to see things. I'm starting to see beams and wood and structure and all that sort of stuff, which is my left brain doing that. Um, if I had my druthers, I would tend to not have as much of that going on, but hard to control your left brain, folks. Um, and uh, <laughs> I'm giving you a good example of how hard it is right here today. It's Your left brain just wants to make sense out of everything. So that's why abstracts are probably some of the toughest things to paint, because uh, your, your mind just wants to put things in an order that uh, says, I know what that is, that's a beam, or that's a 
tree or whatever. And uh, so when your brain does that, you have to stop and say, wait a minute, left brain, shut up, leave me alone. Let me stay in this right brain moment as long as I can. All right, I'm getting a lot of little shapes here. I think I'm gonna stop with the little shapes and sort of see if I can leave the big ones there. Um, okay. Um, this area of this over here, I think needs to have a little more a little more definition, so I'm going to put another dark streak down here. Just blues, violets, ovenion orange, um, and still the grain brown. So now I'm getting a dark over here, I got a dark over here, so what am I getting? I'm getting competing darks. But when you look at this, hopefully your eye is going to maybe go here instead of there. Uh, because of the white that surrounds my dark over here. Uh, and I may need to put, punch up some more of this dark to make the eye come over there. So let's see if I can do that. So I'm trying to figure out how to make your eye move. I see two rectangular shapes here that are left over from a while ago and I didn't uh, finish that off. Let's see if I can put a couple of things in here to help Give some movement in there. Um, something like that. Okay. Um, I worry about a big area like this as well. That's just all one, pretty much one color. Uh, there's a theory that I've talked about on my videos before that uh, says if you uh, you don't want to have uh, maybe two square inches of your painting that has nothing going on. There has to be some color change, there has to be some some objects in there, it has to be something that's that's different. And uh, I'm going to pop in a few of this, reddening up my ovignon orange here with just a little of magenta. And I'm going to kind of pop it in over here and uh, sort of finish in this corner. All right, I want you to stay away from this corner. There, okay. So I've got my those two corners darkened in. This corner over here is not dark yet, but um, I'll see if I can pop in a some sort of a dark shape over here. Maybe leave a little bit of that white in there. Um, Come back and connect it up here with this all the way. Okay, now, so I'm getting most of the paper covered with paint. Um, got a few places that could use maybe a little more touch up, but uh, pretty much um, these things go fairly fast. Let's see if I can pull this. Down like that. <clears throat> okay. I guess one thing I'm thinking that with abstracts, it's hard to it's hard to go wrong unless you just obliterate all your white areas and, uh, and that sort of thing. You can uh, pretty much recover, and people get to make up decide what this thing is anyway. So uh, I'm just going to put in a little glaze in here to darken this down a little bit. Um, And uh, part of the fun of abstracts when you're looking at them is, is that the you get to get in the painting. You get to say, oh, that looks like a building, or that looks like a street, or that looks like a horse, or a person, or something. And uh, that brings the viewer, that brings the viewer right into your world. And it makes it something active for them to do. Many people don't understand abstracts. They don't understand how hard they are to paint or how 
um, much work design goes into them because this is really all just shape design is all I'm doing shape design um, and uh, trying to keep away from standard rectangular shapes circles and squares and that sort of thing I'm going to throw a few circular lines in here I'm going to throw a little splatter in here um, and I think I'm going to be done this is really doesn't need a lot more to it. It's still a little dark or a little bit light here. Probably need to darken this down just a little at the top here uh, to kind of keep your eye in the painting. So I'm going to take a light glaze of my blue and neutral tint. Sort of just see if I can come over this. I'm going to do this. Sort of like, let's go this way. Something like this will help kind of pull the eye in, at least to this shape down here. Um, like that. And, uh, okay, don't do too much. I have a big triangular shape here that I would like to uh, somehow mess up so that it's not a perfect triangle. So let's put a little bit of a something in here like this and connect it over here like it looks like it's going out over there. Okay, so that broke that shape up with another abstract shape. This abstract shape down here is about the same situation. Um, I'm going to see if I can put a little bit of a something in here to make it uh, change its shape so we don't have just pure okay and uh, then maybe we'll just put in some dark points around here around this thing uh, to sort of help uh, move the eye around a little bit your eye will jump around between the darks and the lights and the that sort of thing I'll just throw in a few things here maybe a Something like that over there. Um, there are some bands around this thing over here we could throw in that maybe help. Um, okay. Um, a bit of a tone in here. To, Keep the eye in. Okay. Um, get my big rigger brush here and uh, see if I can work up some splatter. I don't know. Um, it may not work very well, but we will try. This big rigger brush has these big long bristles on it, and you can just sort of flick them all over the place like that, and they just uh, really make some nice. Okay, now the calligraphy part of this uh, really should be dry. I'm going to try to do it without the, uh, the dryness here, but uh, without drying it again. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can kind of come in here and put in some, just some straight lines or curved lines. We've got a lot of, a lot of vertical, a lot of horizontal lines. Don't have a lot of curved, have a few angular lines, but um, I want to have some, uh, some things that sort of Give me this additional movement here, like this. Um, and uh, those things tend to help your painting uh, a lot because they help inject movement. This is pretty dead area over here, but what happens if I what happens if I throw in a nice curved curved line in here of some sort that sort of matches this curve over here? Like if I come here and do something like that it again like that all of a sudden now you're seeing things that might be uh, representative in here that's uh, circles and not circles but basically uh, ovals or something um, so uh, you know you could probably ruin this thing maybe I already have in your mind but um, 
I want to I want to basically uh, try to get enough splatter in here that it uh, gives it a real looseness. Okay, so when you stand back and look at that, where does your eye go? It should go right in here, hopefully. Um, I do have, this is probably, when I look at it, my eye is drawn over here a little bit, uh, which means that's a little bit too light. Um, but it's all about trying to control the eye movement to some extent and uh, keep the eye in the area of the focal point. Um, so let's just sort of tone this down a little bit over here and see if I can maybe help keep that, this being the lightest lights over here. Um, this area is still calling to me as well. Um, right in here, I'm going to sort of give myself just a little bit of a dark value there. Okay. Now, stand back, look at it, and evaluate it. Say, have I done enough? And this is a nice big rectangular area here. I'm really not crazy about the way that looks, but a little better. Okay. All right, folks. Um, <clears throat> I hope you uh, like this idea of a lands of a, a, a impressionistic sort of uh, abstract scene. One that's very non-specific. If you can see some things in there that I don't see, that's good for you. Um, I will take this and rotate it a couple different ways but uh, <clears throat> to see what I like best. But basically I think it's uh, pretty complete and uh, I don't need to do a whole lot more with it. Um, I might throw a little more splatter in a couple areas but pretty much uh, pretty much finished. And you saw how I got it. I started with that photograph of uh, Peggy's Cove that had had a boat and a building and a dock and all kinds of debris around it and I just zoomed in to the uh, to the area where the debris was and uh, used that as a, uh, a guide and uh, that's what I came up with so uh, hope you like this uh, give it a try and let me know how you do uh, if you're not a subscriber please subscribe to my channel uh, I put videos up every month at least and uh, sometimes two a month and uh, I do a mixture of watercolors and oils, as you know, and uh, so I hope this has been fun for you. It's been fun for me. It hurts my right brain when I work in an abstract mode for very long, uh, but it's a lot of fun to try to challenge myself in these different types of uh, painting uh, scenarios. So um, check me out on Facebook, uh, and until uh, I see you again, this is Larry Hamilton saying so long for now. Goodbye.